starting line video. Hey, we're live. What's up, guys? Reese will entertain you while I get this going over here. Oh, jeez. I'm just looking at Corey Kirkland's mm -hmm. post on a 2016 CR450. Shall I tell you about it, Justin? I think this could be your next bike, dude. Go for it. It's on Offer Up for crying out loud. He posted his bike on Offer Up. I don't think it's his bike. But it's got Yosh exhaust. I mean, it's got wheel Oh, that's Cameron's. Okay. Oh, 14 one high compression piston. Nice. GMR. Oh, yeah. So, hey, we're getting people logging on. Uh, for those of you watching live, don't mind our mics. You guys won't be able to hear the good quality. For everyone uh, on SoundCloud, YouTube, and everywhere else, a little better audio quality this week. Making baby steps. Uh, what's up, Chris? Oh, hey. Brandy, how's it going? Evan? Reese is logged in, I can see. Oh, yeah, that's so I can keep an eye on the comments, dude. Oh, so yeah, you don't have a screen. See, that's why the uh, new television is going to come in handy. Yeah, because, guys, right now, me and Justin in the past, when I'm not sitting so far away from them, we just roll off my phone because otherwise you can't see anything. Um, so, Jeremiah? Oh, so, Jeremiah's Sarah? in the house. What's up, Holly? Um, yeah, by the way, if anyone has like a 60 inch flat screen and you want to donate to Moto Monday, let me know. Look at the plug. Hey, so looking for some sponsors, you know? You never know. It, it, people might have one kicking around. You never know. We know enough people that have big houses. Yeah, if anyone has a big flat screen we can have, uh, let us know so we can uh, read the comments a little better. So, Callie, Chris, Devin, Sarah. The other Chris, Chris, there's a lot of Chris's logging on right now. What's up, guys? Um, wow, how do you guys notice I have an L on my hand? <laughs> Which hand is left? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is my left hand, too. This is a reminder I need to bring my laptop to the shop tomorrow to download some software. L for laptop? I'm not, yeah. I get it. I could have drawn a little laptop on there, but... Would have been more of a funny story, I think. Yeah... I didn't even realize that. Good, good eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good impressive. eye. <laughs> impressive. So, Reese, what's going on, man? This is Moto Monday 27. That's crazy, man. But that's I, how we're not kicked off the internet yet is beyond me. Honestly. Oh, no. We, dude, we keep it pretty chill. I mean, I was honestly listening to the... So, the UFC has an official podcast called UFC Unfiltered. And it's put on by the people that run the UFC? It's paid for by them. However, so they, it's ran by two people who kind of, one's a comedian, one's a former championship fighter. They get on together and they do, I think, like three or four a week and they kind of do their thing. Now, this is the official UFC podcast. So, like, UFC, they stamp their name to it. Like, hey, whatever you guys say on here, is, we're cool with it, basically. Yes. That's gnarly. Yes, but it's <laughs> UFC unfiltered. They're very unfiltered. Well, I really never kicked in until, I, mean, I was listening to it and they're talking and this guy's talking. One of the hosts went in for five minutes about how uh, when he was 19, he had a hooker lick his asshole in some hotel out when he was at a comedy gig. And I'm, it literally went into detail for five minutes. I'm like, can we get back to fighting? That's the beauty of the podcast world, dude. It kind of, it goes where it goes. Well, everyone, I feel like some try too hard. They're trying to be the next Howard Stern. Right. Derek, what's up? Steve, Ryan Hennessy, what's up, buddy? And... That's fine. Obviously, he's very successful. Um, That's a but those are hard shoes to fill, and we it, can't all be that that guy. Filthy. You can't all be that guy. No, that's it's, just natural for him. It's funny. It's like it's one of those things where it's like it's funny at first, then it's cute, and then afterwards, everybody, after a while, everybody's like, "Okay, we're you're annoying. Like, shut yeah, up." Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah, too much. Some are pretty funny. Um, yeah, uh, I another one I like is the the fighter and the kid and. You know, they'll go great and clean, and then I, I swear, I don't know, they just get this idea, um, and it just goes way too far. Like, they had a joke, and it's now turned into a t-shirt, which we are going to make a t-shirt. A Moto Monday. We, by the way, 110 Clothing is, oh, Hennessy says you're a stud, and I'm not. Nice. Thanks, Ryan. So, uh, Josh, what's up? Uh, take him off. Take him off. That's already happening. We're going to ignore that one. <laughs> Matt, what's up, buddy? <laughs> uh... God, dude, dude. What the? <laughs> you had to start with bringing up Howard Stern and stuff, and it's already going in the tank. I know. I should probably not even finish what I was talking about, but like, we need to make some jokes. We need to like take a shirt off, Moto Monday T-shirt, which it's already it happened. Would already be an extremely funny. Uh, would you call that a pun? Yeah, yeah, kind of. 
See, now this podcast I listen to, a hundred times bigger than us. Well, right. Well, we're, but, we're small. I don't even... I, we don't even call us D-class celebrities, but I think we're below that. I wouldn't say... We're, we're not celebrities. Like, we're just two dudes with microphones in our faces. And it feels uncomfortable sometimes. It's <laughs> better than... S- <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Just stop. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, uh, before we, you know... Uh, I was just going to say, uh, this other one, they, they had some joke one time. Um, this guy, blah, 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 he needs to do, you know, he's just all hovering around me, following me around. He's just a certified dick diver. They now have t-shirts with a dude in an old school summer, or like, not a summer, you know, that was old outfits, like when they gave scuba kids, gear, old school scuba with a mm-hmm. huge helmet. Yep. Certified dick diver. That's a, mm-hmm. they sold out in 24 hours. A gnarly shirt. The question is, I wonder how many guys bought that for their friends that were straight, or how many straight guys bought that just to be funny. How many chicks bought that shirt? That's another question. You know what I mean? It's interesting. I don't know, but it was funny. I feel like we should do them. Um, yeah, Josh and everyone else who's wondering about the uh, Brock for Booby shirts, we are sending them out this week. I waited. I wanted to do it all at once in a batch, so I was kind of waiting until to end the campaign. So I'm going to end the campaign. Let you guys know how much we raised. I think we did over 600, like 620 something. I got to double check. And then um, I'll be sending out all the product this week. So sorry, it was a little more of a delay. I was kind of just waiting to get any, and a few last minute donations kind of trickled in. Just it's easier if I can print everything at once and ship it all at once. So sorry, guys. Um, uh, quick shout out. Chuck Cripps, what's up, brother? I saw Travis just getting on here. Um, gee, the comments are flying. Scott, what's up, brother? Mike Williamson, what's up, dude? I don't know, comments are out of control right now. Uh, dude, I, on my phone, it's hard to keep up with, man. It's rad. <sighs> Scott, weird topic. Don't, Scott, you know, maybe if you were on time, bro, you would know what's going on. Not yeah, we have any room to stop, but it's fine. Mm-hmm. So, Reese, can I share a story with you? By all means, Justin. When has it ever stopped you before? <laughs> well, actually, it's not necessarily a story. It's just something, um, I guess, been on my mind. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Almost, pretty, actually pretty consistently, I'd say on a weekly basis, I get people hit me up and they want graphics. They want them fast. Okay. Okay. Sponsorship or just... They just know they're just placing orders. They want the graphics and they want them fast. Understandable. A lot of times, yeah, race coming up. Last minute. Yeah, right. Sponsor change. I get it. I get it. Um, <sighs> this is a common thing I hear. It's like, dude, I need these graphics for this race coming up or else I can't race. Ooh, that's a, that's a, I hope that's where you're going with this. That is exactly where I'm going with this, which I, I've been in the graphics business about 14 years now. Okay. Two, two. Yeah, yeah. I love making bike graphics. It is my passion. Graphics are awesome. I always got to have graphics on my bikes, you know? Well, it's the easiest thing you can do to make your bike look sick. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. You don't need graphics to race. I have seen people race supercross. With stuck on numbers in OEM scratched up graphics. As soon as you're done, I have a great segue into what you're talking about to back up your whole point. I, I just want to say this. I love graphics. Graphics make your book bike look awesome. Some of the best money you can spend. Plus to really horsepower spice it up. Right off the top. Oh yeah, horsepower right here. 1.5 horsepower guaranteed with every new set of graphics. Dude, because it, it flows through the air better, dude. Just here's the thing though. If you did not show up to a race because your graphics did not get there in, in time, please go on Craigslist, <laughs> list your bike for sale, <laughs> throw away your gear, and get the hell out of my sport. <laughs> you don't need graphics to race. And I have heard countless times, including today, again, okay. that if I don't have my graphics, I can't do it or what happened last week, someone said their graphics didn't show up in time, and so they had to miss the race. It was the fourth round in a series, he was in a points chase, blah, blah. He gave me the whole run, and I'm like, you just told, you tell me you are now missing out on high points because your graphics didn't show up on time? And it, it wasn't our fault, it was his lack of, I mean, he, it was someone over in like Minnesota or something, and he, they hit us up like two days before a race. Like, bro, we're on the West Coast. Dude, Jason Gilcrease, what's up, buddy? I hope uh, hope you're feeling all right. Uh, Bill Berry says 10, 10 horsepower. Oh, yeah. graphics do it. Man, Man, wait, bro, weight production. Yes. Got them <laughs> slick graphics. The wind just blows right by. Dude, that's why those guys can scrub and whip so hard, dude, because the air just... Uh, Smith, what's up, brother? 
Um, oh, God, Matt. Okay, so quick side note, speaking of graphics and racing without them, Matty Frank has been on me about, I bought a stadium plate for the 450, and I haven't hit you up yet about getting a number plate on it, which is my fault. It is my fault. I'm racing Woodland. It's all good. And uh, Matt has been on me like a bum on a bologna sandwich about not having a number on the front of my bike. And I try to tell him, when you're not in the front of the pack, dude, it doesn't really matter. I'm just out here to have fun. But it just bugs him. So now I kind of want to keep doing it because it's just... It's bugging the crap out of me. It's great. That's kind of funny. So, but you see, you're racing just fine. I now just to prove this point, I want to sign up for the next race. It brought nothing. nothing. Bless as plastic as a graphic designer. That would be so. Rad. Show up as the oldest graphic <laughs> company in the Northwest. Dude, with a duct the tape. The owner of the oldest graphic company duct in the Northwest. Duct tape number one for the win on your And just plate. duct tape numbers because you don't need graphics to ride. What is wrong? With people like you don't need you don't need graphics to go sign up and race. And here's the best part. Yep. It's rarely pros that give me the story. It's usually I'm mm -hmm. sorry for offending people. The guy's getting twelfth place in the beginner class. Right. I don't think anyone looks at your bike anyways. I here's said it. Here's the funny thing. To segue into everything you're saying, okay. I won't go long for too long. But um funny story bringing that up. Clark County Arena Cross. Race night. Probably five, maybe six years ago, I was there. Sean Sparkman, all the Duvall boys came down. D it, packed pro class night. Rad. Dude shows up. Mazda, like 98 B2200 Mazda pickup truck. Brand new KX450. Bone stock. And I'm talking like, mm -hmm. I don't even know if he had a sag set. Duct tape number one. Blown out. Rusty. Craftsman crafts. Toolbox on the tailgate of his truck. No easy up, dude. In the rain. Pulls his bike inside, dominates the pro class. Never found out who the dude was. I don't know if he was a Cali boy. I don't know if he was from Eastern Wine. I have no idea. Dominates the pro class. Bone stock kicks 450. Works everybody over. Was and it smell? It might have been. Because oh. that probably was the what? time when he got his bike. But I don't know. Gunster was riding then, too. I don't know. This was probably like, this had to be 09, 010. Dude, it could have been Gunster. Danny Gunster. Because he, and he, he didn't like, I didn't see him cruising around the pits, just showed up, duct tape number one, dude, stock chain, sprockets, everything. Like, he went to Pro Caliber that morning, bought the bike, and then raced it. It was crazy. Worked over the Pro class. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I feel like to prove some of my points, I need to really show up to a race on a 98 YZ250 steel framer, <laughs> um, which we need to talk after this. Yep. I think I actually bought one. Um, yes. And no graphics and duct tape numbers because you don't need all that to race. You don't need all that to have fun, and you definitely don't need all that to go fast. I will say this. I absolutely love dirt bikes. I love modern dirt bikes. I think when you see a bike at the track, because we've all done it, we're all fanboys to some degree. We all have our taste and bike style we like. Okay. When you see the guy that has the brand new bike, that has the, the current year bike, and he already has wheel set, exhaust, full graphics, seat cover, dope bars, triple clamp, suspension, and, and just, trip tape, you know that he's in the 40 plus class. Yes. Just the bike is just, <laughs> it, it's pristine in its middle of summer, and you know that he hasn't been riding that much, or he can afford to buy new graphics all the time and fresh, you know what I mean? Like, when you see the bike that's just sick, works connection, everything, just dope, we all do the same thing and go, oh, that's sick. Because they look rad. But, honestly, you buy a bike off the showroom floor, safety wire your grips, nut and bolt the thing, go racing, set your chain. Unless, Tire you, pressure. unless you buy a Honda. It usually requires a little bit more work. A little more grease. Just kidding, because they're sick. Um, but, uh, Dude, you know what I mean? That's The funny thing is the bikes are so good now. Dude, the bikes from back in the day are good, dude. If you have anything from like 2000 and up, dude, and it's in mechan mechanically functioning properly. The brakes right. work, yeah. it has decent tires, the grips don't spin, you, know, you don't have a sharp clutch lever that's going to stab your guts out, you can do really well locally. Oh, yeah. And it's been proven time and time again. And I'm, I have a 17 450 Honda, Justin, that I'm making payments on. I'm not trying to say that I'm not one of those guys at all, but you definitely, yeah, people that's, oh, I need graphics, I need exhaust, I need, you don't need that. You need a bike that works properly, um, it has to function, right, unless unless you're just that good. Your bike has to work, 
but you don't need all the whiz wazzles and all the stuff to go fast, dude. There's so much Absolutely not. conditioning, riding skill is the big thing. Dude. You can be out of shape and know how to ride a dirt bike and go just die for five Harrison, laps. Harrison Drummond on his old CR250. Dude, that dude, when he brought it to TSR, bro, you remember the clutch side grip was a quad grip. A pink, was it a pink or yeah. something? Dude, d- didn't match. It, it was it spun around. It was like a secondary throttle, dude. It had nothing, and uh, that thing was his linkage bearings were so bad that when we re-greased them, they were rusty. And he's like, I don't have any money, and I'm like, Well, mm-hmm. me and Jeremiah talked to him like, Well, we're gonna re-grease them at least, dude. Mm-hmm. So we soaked the ba- needle bearings. His rear suspension actually moved. The only thing that was pivoting was the shock. Mm-hmm. And he he rode the bike. And he can't. He's like, Guys, the bike feels weird. I I don't like it. That's because your suspension's actually moving through the stroke, dude. Yeah, like, he was so fast on that thing. And then that's a kid that just, dude, just burn laps. You know, he told me at one point, he said, dude, when I was trying to get fast, I remember Harrison say, you know what, I would just ride my practice track, and I would just tell myself, I am going to pretend like every lap I'm out here, I'm chasing down the Warriors because I want to beat him at PIR. And he did. He did, yeah. Right? Not every time. But he accomplished that goal, and that was that's Man. a gnarly, that's a gnarly goal, bro. Because that was back when Elias was riding a lot. Like that was the creme de la creme. You know what I mean? Of sorts, local pros go like, dudes are moving. So yeah, you you don't need all the fancy stuff. No. And I'm not saying the fancy stuff's not sick because it is. We all love it, but you don't need it to go fast. Which speaking of old bikes, especially old Hondas. Ooh, my favorite. Let's let's just probably the worst Honda built in the past twenty years. The '98 CR250. Yes! Get? Yes! Do you know that Ronnie Mack just raced? Yeah. Australian SX Open. I didn't watch the actual like, one footage. on one versus Ricky Carmichael. A somewhat reputable name in the yeah. industry, I would say. Ricky Carmichael, yeah. the GOAT, you know? Yeah. Now, it was a little bit of a. I watched the race. It was a little bit, of, you could kind of tell the setup. Ricky Carmichael's not the best at putting on the show. He raced Ronnie and like started to pull away and like. Uh, okay, it's not really a race. And then he, like, slowed way down and let Ronnie Kim and hit him. And, like, okay, you made it really obvious this is kind of fake now, Ricky. Right. Like, you're kind of failing here. But whatever. So then they went and raced for a lap. And he cleaned Ronnie out. Like, we're talking off the back of the bike, bike over a berm. It was kind of impressive. Like, okay, that's fun. That's right. Um, Ronnie was hurting. Oh, dude. And then they decided to take it to the next level. Then Ronnie went over to the podium place where Carmichael was, and he pushes Ricky off his bike, and then starts kicking in the the side panel. Just starts kicking, kicking on that floor, and then some big Hulk TRT for those of you who don't know, basically roided out Australian dude. That's been weight faking bacon way too much in a tight ass extra small black monster shirt. Just tackles him. Classic. Just well, boom, takes him down. Ronnie uh, Mac down for the count. Uh, I'll get, okay, before I touch on that, uh, a ton of people are commenting saying like, uh, "You guys are right, hell yeah." Oh yeah. You don't need the bike, anyways. Everybody, thank you guys for commenting. Um, Jeff, what's up, brother? Uh, Bill Barrier, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, it's sorry, guys. It's hard to keep up with all these. Uh, Maddie Frank, good suspension. Then don't keep up with them. We got stuff to go. Oh, hold on. Uh, Vicky Martin, what's up? Bob McAllister, what's up, buddy? Brock, what's up? Um, I'm doing my best, man. Way too many shout outs. Steve, moving on. What's up? Uh, the Ronnie Mac thing. I'm getting you one of those certified dick diver shirts. Thanks, bro. Uh, anyways, I look forward to watching you print it. Because uh, <laughs> you're going to have to make that screen, dude. Uh, the Ronnie Mac thing with, I watched all the highlights on Facebook. It obviously blew up. And yes, there was that thing where it was like, it was kind of like, ooh. Granted, we can all go back and forth for days about who Ronnie Mac is. I still believe 99% of the time it's Jimmy Hobson, right? But whatever, that's a whole. We could do a whole Moto Monday on. We can do yes. So I will say this though. Future guest, that would be sick. Future um, Moto Monday guest, Ronnie Mack. Yes. Who's down? Calling him out. We're calling him out. If right anybody now. is friends with Jimmy Albertson on his actual Facebook page, not the fan no, page, just don't give it away. We are going to invite Ronnie Mack onto Moto Monday. I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. I'm going to tag him. 
I think you should do I'm it. I'm gonna tag him in the YouTube video. I think you should do it. Um, future guest, I'll buy your plane ticket. Ronnie Mack will call you out right now. Come on Moto Monday. Yes. Before Moto Monday. Let's give him a time. Before 40? Yeah. Give him, give him some kids. Those guys are busy and they got a lot going on. Without giving it away, let's just say I know someone. All right. Okay. So, future guest, Ronnie Mack. I think that would be a fun one. Um, we are not going to put Ronnie Mack in the dick diver shirt, though. Uh, he brings his own outfit that's rad. Yeah, he's, he's going to be out, He's gonna be just fine. Blown out FMF, so, cloth jersey and all, dude. Sick. Um, I... You, get, you want to finish that before I move on? Because I yeah, have a question. Quick, quick, quick thing. Just say the Ryan Mack thing. Yes, I know what you're talking about. I watched enough highlights to see kind of like you could tell Carmack slowed up, but it's cool to see people in the industry that are, have a significant influence playing along with the whole Ronnie Mack thing. That fact that Carmichael did that. But however much money he got paid, sponsored, I don't care. The fact that they're putting people out there on two strokes. They're letting Ronnie out, like, they're letting Mac out there on the clapped out 98, which isn't really clapped out, it just looks clapped out, let's be honest. Oh, okay. sure, that thing is sick. Dude, that thing is dope. He was keeping up the factory bikes. Dude, built motor, like, it's oh, merge yeah. sponsored, like, it's, the bike just is, yeah. It's one of the sickest 98 CR 250s you will find. I, other than if somebody pulls a factory 98 out of the, the, the crate that Honda Corporation has tucked away somewhere, if there any of them that still exist. That is probably the fastest one around, I bet. I'm willing to bet. Oh, that thing is way faster than I want to stock, bro. Yeah. He was keeping up with factory TTMs on that sucker. Yeah, it's worked over, dude. I'm sure it's polished transmission. Don't, I mean, they literally... Like every... They, like, yeah. you guys may think it looks like a Roach 98. Here's the one thing that just blows me away, though. Like, you can throw all that stuff on it. You still got that horrible chassis. Oh, they were bad, dude. It rattled... It was awkward and stiff. Or, uh -uh. I personally got to talk to a handful of guys from that era that were fast back then. Like local pro says, and they all said the same thing. When the Honda came out, aluminum frame was like, this thing is sick. 97 and 99, bro, were not good years for the Honda. Not, no, they were wow. so rigid and stiff because they took what they knew from the sport bike industry and the street bike frames, the, when the twin spar aluminum things started coming, and they didn't have the flex. And granted, you figure the opinions, everybody's been riding steel frames at that time, like, it is a big shock. You know what I mean? Can I place a bet? Yeah. What, is it a gentleman's bet? $1? Or are we going higher than that? $500 to anyone who wants to bet me. Oh, God, I'm out. I'm out! Okay, you're up. $500 says in 15 years, all major motorcycle manufacturers making motocross bikes will have steel frames. We're going back Ooh. to steel. Ooh, that's a good 15 one. years though, so we're gonna have to like write this down. Anyone? 500 bucks. I say we're all going back to steel. I've ridden both. I think the steel frame bikes feel better. There's a reason. Look, KTM's killing it. What do they have? Steel frames. Um, more dude, flex. You're easy. opening a, such a big topic. I will say we, this. we don't need to stay on this topic. We got a lot of stuff we'll to cover. We'll skip over it, but I will say this. You gotta give it to KTM and Husky. They figured it out and like. I am just a regular Joe, dude. I read Transworld like everybody else in YouTube forums and internet stuff. I will say this. The tech articles I've read about KTM and Husky as far as their development program with the steel frames as far as doing like different frame geometry, uh, frames that have different cups that are CNC machined for being able to change the head offset and have their factory riders go up right and they do like 12, 15, whatever. Um, they, whatever it is, that they figured out, they put in the time, they make a really good bike. Um, but I don't know, dude. That's a big swing. Like, not everybody's even making a two-stroke again yet. So, we'll, uh, 15 years, all steel frame. We're probably gonna be electric bikes by then. But I say 15 years, all steel frame. Aluminum's gonna be dead. Let's move on. Okay, fair enough. Because that, that's a big one. That's that is. A, we could debate this forever. So, um, let's since we have limited time, let's go into what happened last week. Uh, Hell yeah. There's Don, a few of what's us. up, buddy? Um, what's up, Lancaster? Josh, Bill, Donnie. Um, there's a few events that went down last week. One, I was really bummed I couldn't make it to. I unfortunately had a ton of stuff to get ready for because I have Riverdale next week. So I spent my week in making trophies, phone calls, banners, and just general stuff to get ready for my race. Um, I really wanted to go try the Pomeroy track. Mm. Abrigo's been pumping this hard. 
it looks like fun. They mostly do vintage races. They only do a few here and there outside of that. But like, it looks fun. It's a huge uphill start. Like, uh, dude, it looks fun. Um, I know nothing about it. Where is this? Side note, Bill Barrier has a 1979 XR80 for sale for $200. Vintage Ooh. racing? Vintage and pit bike. And pit bike. That's sick. You should buy it. Okay, I'll buy you fix it up for me. Deal. All right. Uh, quick Bill, shout out. Yeah. If anybody has a DRZ 110, KLX 110, or a CRF 110, that's a project bike that they're willing to help somebody out. They're looking for a pit bike. Yeah, so Palmer is a bit up north from us. Uh, Eric Warner says it was a mud race. It did look like a mud race, like everywhere else around here. But uh, I want to go hit it sometime. It looks like fun. I've never done it. I'm really trying to hit every track that I can. Where Where is it, dude? I literally know nothing about it. So, T Titan? Titan? You guys, how do you pronounce it? It's, it? it's up north from here. Have you mapped what, like three hours, four hours from us? Three-ish, probably. That's doable. Yeah, it's kind of... I could like draw it. It's one of the like over one of those. So uh, it's no worse than Monroe for us. So which going to Monroe? Mm -hmm. Monroe went down. Pit bikes were out there, guys. How many pit bikes were uh, out there? How many pit bikes? Um, because it looked like there was a good chunk of pit bikes. The track I heard was pretty mellow. It was like pretty rideable. But the whoops were just gnarly, just like, oh, hang on, Betsy, here <laughs> we go, which sounds like Monroe. I don't know what it is. Guys, who's the track builder at Monroe? Because the few times that I've ridden it, which is only a few times, because it's about a three and a half, four hour drive for me. Well, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a trick, especially if you yeah. want to make a one night deal out, or get back home the same day, dude. So, um... I don't know what it is. They'll have a pretty fun, rideable track, and then just like, oh dear God, we have full arena cross whoops. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, just crazy whoops. Um, ah, I love Joey. Anything that has air in the tires and a throttle is the best thing any of us can ride. <laughs> that is that is straight up. I'm so uh, that's classic. That's classic. I, I, I'm gonna give Joey a quick plug. Let me give you a quick plug. Dude, Joey, thank you, brother, for doing the 125 stuff. And uh, I see all the stuff on social media, dude, that you ride fit bikes, kicks, 500s. Just, I, it, it doesn't go unnoticed, and uh, it's appreciated what you're doing, dude. It is. So, anyways, back to Arena Cross and whoops. You definitely get that dick diver shirt. Listen, man, you can give me shit. Oh, <laughs> this is a fanboy. Oh, What's God. up, McCormick? Yes, oh. Jason. Yes. You can give me all the shit you want about this and that. Oh, you get McCormick and Reese gets all giggly. Da, da, da. All that stuff, dude. I just am so stoked for anybody. You, Lancaster, the, all the dudes that are like making a difference. Dude, all the promoters, everybody that's like doing something to keep riding dirt bikes fun, man. Because hey, I, I'll give kudos to anyone who tries to uh, encourage people to go ride their dirt bike, to go race their dirt bike, and tries to do something to give back to the sport. Because you know what? Nine out of ten people working in the sport. No, nah, I wouldn't say that. That's actually that's too far. That's definitely now I start thinking names. No, that's definitely too far. Um, there, uh, there's, there's a lot of people who get into the industry and then get out because they they don't they make a get, windfall of money. There, that's well, they, they just put their hand out. They just want money. They don't do anything to give back. They just have their hand out, and that's not how you do it. And you can't make it anywhere in the sport. If you are looking to get rich, completely get out of motocross. Okay? If you love motocross and stand, cool. But, like, the people who come in and just put their hand out, expecting the money and never getting anything back, you guys ain't going to last. You ain't going to last at all. Dude, here's the thing, bro. I've had this story told me by a, a good good friend of ours, Jeremiah. He said, yeah, and I'm not going to butcher this a little bit because I don't remember if it was his cousin, his nephew, whatever. He said he, one of his family members, their uh, their son was uh, played played golf, and went to college, did that whole thing, was playing on a team, all that. He met Jeremiah. They were talking, and he asked, "Hey guys," or he said, "Hey Jeremiah, like you race motocross, you know, as an amateur. That's what I do for golf. That's cool. I'm like, how much how much money do you guys make when you like you know get a podium or whatever?" And the kid, this is a, coming from a kid that never ridden a dirt bike, doesn't know anything about him. And he goes, 
And Jeremy was like, oh, dude, we don't make any money. Like, we, we pay our 40 bucks or whatever to yeah. go race, and then we're just stoked when we can get a little plastic trophy. And the kid looked at him, and, I, and this is, I'm trying to go verbatim, but I don't remember, guys, it's been a while, but I heard Jeremiah telling me and expressing to me that he was like, he looked at me like, he looked at Jeremiah like he was crazy. Like, that's it? You spend money, but you make nothing back. He goes, dude, I can go place 22nd in a, quote, amateur golf tournament at the college level and get 25000 or whatever, you know what I mean, in these major tournaments with big sponsors. And he goes, oh, he goes, no, dude, even if you're a professional privateer or a satellite team rider, like, you're going to make, you know, 50 k a year maybe as a satellite rider plus all yeah. your training, all the, yeah. all the money you put into yourself. It's a passion sport. You got a passion sport. And I think I put my microphone in backwards. Classic. Classic. It is a pa- technical difficulties on Moto Monday, guys. Oh, no, no, we're good. Never. Uh, maybe we're not good. Wait, wait, wait. No, uh, Misty, so, what's up? Corey Kirkman, what's up, buddy? Um, Yeah, it's a sport about passion. If you ain't got the passion, I think you get rooted out pretty quickly. And then people figure it out, and they move on, because you can't just be putting your hand out all the time. you got to do some s- stuff back for people, which we'll go into in a minute, because I think I had a good idea, and some people have been trying to crucify me over it, but I think I had a good idea with the writing clinic. But let's first, before we get into what's coming up, let's finish what happened last week. Yep. We did not make Pomeroy. I'm bombed one of these days. I'd like to do it. Um, it Sarah, I will not wear that shirt. I am sorry. What's up, Tim, Alan, Jamie? Um... So Monroe we, happened. Monroe happened. Neither um, of us made it. No, but the whoops Fails. sounded gnarly. I had a lot of friends who went. Um, it sounded like everyone had fun, though. And we got to go, dude. We, we, we got to go. We got to make it happen. Stop being girls about it. We got to go. I'm just nervous about the trip, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cup drop. <laughs> cup drop. So, and then the, I think the only other event that we missed last week was, I'm sorry, not missed. I haven't covered. Um, Woodland. Yep. It rained. It did rain. I heard, though, so you went. I wasn't able to make it. Uh, I Everyone who's been telling me I should go out there and announce, I will do that one of these before Woodland's over. I will bring out my portable PA system and just go to town. Dude, I got these new long-range microphones. I got, like, okay. a good 400 feet with them. So even if I get chased around the track, I can run around with my microphone and they still work. People can chase, and if they try to kick me out, I will run circles on the track, and not, my microphones will still work. Who here? Never mind. Uh, comments are blown up, bro. I love it. People are going back, but it's great. Uh, Corey, how's the bike? The bike is bad. The bike is clapped. I have a 17, bro, with 20 hours on it, and it looks like a piece of poop from riding it in the mud. But it's a dirt bike. That's what they're meant for, right? Parts, grease, it'll be fine. It'll buff. It'll buff. It'll buff. Sure. It'll buff. It'll always buff. It just how much buffing you want to do, that's kind of on you, right? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. So how would one go? We're, actually, real quick, guys. <laughs> Mike says, well, known as Cherry, Gilcrease got hurt. Gilcrease, how long you out, bro? Because that looked like it was painful. Uh, Woodland wasn't muddy. Yeah, okay, so I've heard multiple people have like different input. I, the mini riders weren't too happy with the mud, but they also have little 10 and 12 inch wheels. And so what's perfectly rideable for a big bike may be just hell for a nine year old, you know? That's fair. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard like some spots were really messy and other spots were just prime. It was like a mix on the track. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Um, Quick shout out, like I said, more shout outs. Gilcrease, let us know, buddy, what what that story is, so we can give you a little plug here. Um, don't know if I'm on Friday. Okay, uh, Michael Smith, new school thought it was money, old school thought it was fun. All right, you want my Give me a cup. You talk about Woodland. I'll be right back. All right. All right, guys. Justin's leaving me unfiltered. This is this is all bad. Uh, Adon, what's up, buddy? All right, guys, Woodland, in my opinion, was sick. Um, I came in, uh, big shout out to everybody that helped out uh, for me getting the race. And uh, 
I had to work a 24-hour shift the day before. I left to work, and I work about, I'd say, 15 minutes away from Grace Harbor ORV. I left at 8 a.m., and uh, my captain on shift was cool enough to let me leave a few minutes early. I told him the situation. I was trying to race, going for points, and they let me leave a little early, had coverage, and uh, Paul Das, Angel, all the guys at Willow Mafia, Schweitzer, Maddie, Wells, everybody that helped out. My boy Jordan for coming to help load bikes. I got to show up to the track with no sleep, and uh, it was sick. Bikes were unloaded, easy up was up, gear was set out. So uh, it rained definitely hard the day before. Then when I got there, it was raining a little bit in the morning. Practice was a freaking blast. I don't know. I'd have to say, Justin, that all together, dude, it was pretty good. I have definitely, oh, thank you, sir. Um, definitely had races at Woodlands that were true mutters. Like, the entire track was slop, and you're sitting on the gate, and you, you know, your tear-offs are screwed before you can get, whether you ziplock back in or not, because it's just raining on you while you're sitting on the gate. It rained off and on, very light. It wasn't bad. They actually took a couple minutes periodically throughout the day to scrape the front corner after practice and stuff on the straight. It was muddy, yes. There were a couple slop spots that had some slop on them, yeah. But a lot of it was on the top of the tables and the straightaway. So if you were able to jump the tables, you could literally avoid the mud. At the back side of the track, dude, primo traction, dry, like... And the track was set up in a way that it was kind of long, kind of ran the outside to avoid the soft spots. Um, we could go back and forth about this forever, and I don't want to argue with anybody, but uh, I have to say, all in all, dude, the track got pretty rough, but it was fun. And I can say that because in between my motos, and I had one good moto and one bad moto, um, I was having a ball, dude. I was, just having, I was like, this is fun. There was a decent turnout. It's obviously not like the opener. It rained. There wasn't 300 something people there, but it was a uh, it was fun, dude. And considering you didn't have to sit on the line and pouring down the rain, going, "Why am I here?" I, I don't feel like anybody had that feeling that day. It was for a winter race, totally acceptable. There were lines out there, nice. And the track was set nice. up pretty wide, and we all fall into the same habit where we all ride the same two feet of track once there's kind of a line developed. But uh, if you were able to get creative, which uh, Shout out to Smith for showing me a couple lines out there in practice. You could skim over the ruts, dude, and find smooth track that was like a freeway. Good. You, you just suck rode. at finding lines. I know. It's bad. I've, I've ridden with you many times. You take some crappy lines. I get tired, bro. <laughs> I, well, I think it's something that comes with age, though, because when I ride with... I, I'll ride with some kids who are honestly more aggressive and better shape. Yep. Good riders, you know, like, like top juniors or good intermediates and, like... I'll pace them without as much aggression, just simply because, like, why are you hitting that stupid line over there? Well, just simply smooth line choices are all around the track. It was amazing how much it'll cut your lap times down. I will say this, without going too in depth, uh, it was it was rad, dude. Like there was one line where they hit, hooked the track, and it was a right hander around the tree as you kind of work your way back around the start. Mm -hmm. um, if you came off the tabletop right before that corner and went way left, kind of brake slide into the corner, you could square up, skim over the ruts, and miss the main line. And if you did that, it set you up beautifully for the next corner, and it was smooth, dude. There was no nobody's riding out there. We're gonna pause real quick. I was literally just getting ready to go into this, and Joey throws it down. If riders got sponsors for complaining about what they love to do. Uh, they were, they were all have factory ride. Like, that, I was literally just about to go into that about, um, because we're into the winter season where tracks are getting a little rougher. Yep. I don't know if, I think riders around here should really be given a free tour of all the tracks around the Northwest. Go to Montana and sign up for a race. Go to SoCal and go, you know, everyone's like, oh, they're open for every day of the week down in SoCal. Go practice on those tracks. Go ride those tracks. No flaggers. No water. Holes everywhere. Like, yeah, like, we're spoiled up here. We're straight up spoiled. And 
I almost wonder if it's killing our sport. Like, there is so much complaining about track conditions, about... Uh, as a promoter, I, I hear a lot. And I try to work with people because I want the people who show up to my events to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Straight up. I want them to have a good time. I want them to keep coming back. I want them to have fun at my race. But the crazy things I've heard complaints about, I'm like, isn't this a motocross? It's supposed to be one of the toughest sports out there. Like, we're supposed to be kind of tough to be able to do it. And people are complaining about everything like, oh, there was, I, I kid you not, someone complained that there was a tear-off on the starting gate that made them slide out on the start and that we should not allow people to take their tear-offs on. And I had to listen for five minutes as someone's complaining about tear-offs not being allowed to be taken off on the starts. Like, stuff happens. Show up, race on whatever damn track you have and have fun. But it's like, somehow we become a bunch of prima donnas that care more about our bike graphics and about um, our cool Instagram photos and perfectly groomed track conditions and about actually racing motocross. Yes, Justin, I'll do that. And I know, guys, I apologize, any of you that think we're a bunch of yahoos, we're kind of going off on a little bit of a rant here, but... Oh, so, I already, dude, this, I told you I'm in a rant mood today, and you know what, this is my damn podcast slash Facebook Live slash whatever we want to call this, I'm going to rant if I want. If you this, don't like it, you can just click the X button and log out. It's so true, though, man, like, and this is coming from... Uh, dude, the comments are flying. Oh, <laughs> I know uh, the comments are flying. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, what's up, buddy? Uh, Chuck, I gotta give Chuck, he said, any day on a bike is a great day. And you wanna know what? There's a lot of truth to that. Uh, Daniel, what's up, buddy? Um, what's up, Victor? Hey, yeah. Dude, anyone who raced the final few motos at Mountain View and didn't complain, you guys are real motocrossers. Because Mo Mountain View... Gets a little hard pack. It does. So we had a great morning. Got nice and hard. And my favorite track is a nice hard pack. I'm all about that, like smooth throttle control. You, you hate mud, bro. Why are you I, so scared of mud? It just I always get knocked out. I just land on my head. I don't. <laughs> I don't do good with ruts. I wander. Okay. I wander everywhere, and ruts just mess me up. So Mountain View gets nice and hard pack and tacky, like good conditions, and then the rain comes. Oh, great. Now it's hard pack. It's slick. It's slick. I watched Justin Homan. Me, by the way, if Justin's watching, dude, that was a fun race. I did really want to beat you. I'm sorry I hit you that hard. Um, that was fun. But uh, yeah, I dude, I saw this guy throw the sickest metal militia whip over a table, and it, about a split second after, I re I was thinking in my head that that's a sick whip. I then switched over to, oh, he didn't mean to do that. Because <laughs> he's dabbing in the air with his foot as he's dripping right off into the grass, <laughs> off the track. I realized, no, he slid out on the face. Ugh. He is about to die. He lands in the grass, pins it, gets back on, but we, it was a sketchiest moto. Like, but hey, that's motocross. You never know what you're going to get. It's outdoors. You run what you brung, and you go race. And I guarantee the worst conditions any Northwest rider has been on is not as bad as what the national guys hit. Dude, on a yearly basis. Well, here's the, have you seen, Justin, I know you've watched it, dude, videos of Southwick, like, good years, bad years, it's gnarly. Like, there's, there's a few tracks that are just, every year, because of weather, where the track is, like, yeah, we, we have nothing to complain about, in the big scheme of things, you know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds like most people are agreeing on huh? Oh, sassy pants, Justin. You're wearing some sassy pants tonight. There's not even any holes in these. These are pretty laid back I'm pants. I'm kind of upset because I feel like I, I put some nice jeans on and a shirt on to come do this and everything. Jeez, whatever, dude. You notice I'm wearing jeans again. I know. It's kind of throwing me off. It's still throwing me off? Okay. Scott, next week I might just watch. Yeah, do whatever. Oh, man. what? A Jeez. So, you know what, guys? You need to go ride some tracks in some other states. We're spoiled here. Like, go literally go ride a Montana track. Let me know how that goes. Um, even a burrito. Yeah, hey, another promoter. Washington State Series. He agrees. We groom the tracks too much around here. We have spoiled people, and What's then they really? complain whenever there's some bumps or ruts or anything that's out of our control. And then, I, I mean, I've literally had people leave over track conditions. Like, this is unsafe. There's, there's a hole here, or there's this and that. Like, 
man, we're trying, but like we can't shut down the show for a half hour to groom all the time. We're trying, you know. It's, for example, Mountain Dew, we always take a half time to go groom. We can't hit everything. We do our best, but like anyone who has raced a national does not complain about our tracks. Not uh, neither did one of these guys. That's I've never sure. done a national. I, I plan to fix that next year too, but I've never done a national. But I, a, a burrito has. I'd, really, uh, I'd like to do a. There's probably a half dozen people watching right now um, on Facebook Live that have done a national. I guarantee they're not going to complain about the local track conditions because a national, if you're the last moto, they like, oh, dude, the track is gnarly. And that's just a U.S. national. Let's say you race the MXGPs, they don't groom a thing. You just ride it. There's holes that will swallow your bike. Tough luck, ride it. I don't know if you ever watch any of the GoPro footage of like some of the sand tracks over there, and some of the they just they, I don't know if they're 250 F450. It's wide open, a gear load. Just dude, just and you watch them, and some of the best riders in the world look like they're completely out of control. Mm -hmm. And granted, they're that good that that's comfortable. But do you know what I mean? Like that's they know that's how they have to get through that section. Like it's a. Uh, well, do you, Brian Deegan and his son, like, I remember watching some uh, videos on them, and, like, they're like, yeah, we, I take my kid over to, you know, Paula Raceway, whatever the case is, um, on a Wednesday after practice. Like, we show up when practice is done to ride because the track's rough, because it's better for training. And anybody I've ever talked to in my life that is legitimately at one point in their life been extremely fast on a dirt bike has the same thing. You ride tracks when they're rough, you're going to appreciate them when they're groomed. You know what I mean? And I've had those days where I show up to Riverdale, all the tracks are groomed. Me and you have done it on a Wednesday. Pause real quick? Yeah. Okay, just real quick. By the way, all the people commenting about Riverdale, we don't know which track we're even racing on yet, so just be flexible. We make the announcement Wednesday evening on which track we're racing. There's four tracks. We can technically race on any single one. Don't get in your mind that we're committed to racing any one particular track. I'm sorry if I'm throwing you a curveball. It may change. Wednesday evening, you will know which track you're racing on, though. So, Dan Dale said, tell him on Sunday morning. Dan. I kind of like Dan for that. Like, salty, dude. Salty. <laughs> like, just, he's like, screw they ever wants to get practice. And don't tell him what track. <laughs> make him practice all four. He has four <laughs> tracks. He says, make him practice all four. I'm not going to tell you what we want to race on until the day of. He's like, we shouldn't tell him until 15 minutes before practice. <laughs> you got to love Dan, dude. I love Dan for any, that. But any, Anybody that hasn't, like, spent time with Dan hanging out the track, like, you guys will get it. Um, so guys, we will literally be able to use any of the tracks. We're oh. gonna, we're gonna, we may use different tracks for different rounds, just because all weather tracks, conditions, dude. It's, it's weather conditions. I like to mix it up, um, and you know, when well, you're gonna have gates at the main track. So I'm gonna go right there track. Wednesday. I'm gonna decide. What, it looks like it might be a muddy one. I'm thanks, gonna decide. Thanks for the invite, bro. Like, here's your invite. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to decide on Wednesday after taking a few test laps um, which one will probably be the best one for the conditions because it's probably going to rain Wednesday. So I'm going to go right in the mud and I'll decide then. So, uh, okay. no, Doug, we're not talking about Duct Tape Dan. I haven't seen that dude in years. If anyone knows what Duct Tape Dan is up to, please let me know. Uh, you, uh, Ryan, that's awesome. The track is wide. There's always ways around the rough stuff. So, yeah, local race. so yeah, we're going to keep it, uh, McCormick says it's boring if it's smooth. Jason, whatever, bro. Like, what, you, yeah, whatever. You, you got to start riding again before you start talking crap, dude. We just want to eh, shout out, everybody, please comment below if you want to see Jason McCormick start riding again. Jeez. That guy. Call him out. Jeez. Actually, I know he's, he's kind of, he's a little banged up right now, but I still, Jason, we love you, but everybody wants to see you ride dirt bikes again, man. Just for fun. Not even race. Just, you know, more practice days. I don't know. Anything. Rider schools. Anything that sees that guy on a bike. You watched him in Nike Freeze on your 450, dude. Size up some stuff that was just... Dude, he hit a table without even looking where the landing was. And he whipped it sideways. Like, <laughs> Jason, you, I think he came up a little short because I don't even think he knew how long it was. It did he feel, just hit it. It did feel good, though. When he looked at us, he went, dude, uh, it knocked like I just stepped out a little farther than I wanted to on that one. 
Um, just trying to catch up with the comments. Justin, is there a starting gate set up for the the new track? Will the there will be if you're running the race on the new track, correct? With the whole we're still working on the gate situation. Um, our backup plan is we have a drag drag style light that goes from like red to green, which is actually kind of fun because it throws people off a little bit. It's it's and you guys just ran as fair as you guys off. ran it at Castle Rock, right? Yeah. And it went over well. Yeah, it's just as fair as gates. Uh, it's just different, and I know some people will freak out. Like, you know what? Even when we run a rubber band start, motocross and motocross. So, um, as of now, I don't know what track we're running on. I'll let you guys all know on Wednesday. So I guess everyone's like bringing us in now to what's coming up next week. Uh, oh, and a lot of people have been asking me, and I don't know why so many people ask me because I've never been involved with it. But I did show some interest. I have made phone calls. La well, not this year necessarily, but in the past, and I do know a few people. There's no Clark County Arena Cross. It's gone. Yeah, um, it's gone. It's Clark like County Arena Cross slash OT5 slash whatever you want to call it. It's gone. It's gone, gone too. If you guys want to get it back, um, I don't even know what to tell you. Like, there's a few different people who try to take it back. I. I don't know what it's going to take. I feel like if you really want it back. People need to repair the relationship between motocross riders and equestrian people who are very involved with the Clark County Fair Board. And you guys need to let them know that uh, we're not a bunch of Hells Angels, that we are respectful and we will maintain a facility, and then find a promoter who's willing to run a winter race series. Outside of that, I won't get into anything else, any drama, bullshit, rumors, anything. Just uh, right now, it is a we have a relationship problem between the motor community and the horse community and that's what's stopping us from having Clark County Arena Cross slash OT5. And um and the, I'll just sum it up for you Justin. It's sad that it's gone and uh hopefully it comes back but you know thank God for the roads are dude so there's still arena cross. I really miss Clark County though it's five minutes away from here. And, and dude, yeah, I grew up racing there. The but practice schedule, bro, during the week, you could ride every your day. bike every day, dude. And, and what was rad is whether the, the, the year that Landon was involved, whatever, like whoever was running it, you could show up on the Tuesday night or, and I'm just spit one, I don't yeah. remember, but let's say Tuesday night was that night. If you showed up as a 17 year old kid on your 250F, they're not going to tell you you can't ride. No. Like, you got to ride your dirt bike every day of the week. Morning sesh, night sesh, whether you get off work, whatever. You know what I mean? Ha! Harrison Drummond's on. What's up, dude? Did someone say clapped out bikes and old graphics? What's oh, up, Harrison? Geez. Harrison. We we're just talking about you. God, man. Well, Harrison, we missed seeing you ride the Honda's, dude, throwing down. I missed like, I missed a couple years ago, dude. That guy was, he's fast. Harrison's yeah, guys. Fast. He, he was. He threw guys, down. Yeah, he did. I'm not going to go to Clark County or any cross anymore. I will just say, if any of you guys want to see it happen, my suggestion, repair relationships. Don't try to tear them down. And um, that's the best way. I'm a big believer in honey over vinegar. It, uh, anyone who's done business with me for a bit knows that vinegar needs to happen. I will throw down with anyone. Um, I always get like two or three people a year who want to fight me. Like, if we need to come to vinegar, we will come to vinegar. I've gone nose to nose with a few people in my shop before. But <laughs> start with a little honey. Like, guys, it, going, you can't go full aggro on people, especially when they have an upper hand on you. I will just say this. I've heard a few different people try and make a run for Clark County Arena Cross. Like, you want to you wanna get Clark County Arena Cross back, go try to communicate with the fair board, with the county commissioner, county commissioner talk to these guys. Don't try to strong arm them and just talk to them, put your case forward, find a good promoter, push him forward to lead the way, and maybe one day we'll get Clark Henry to cross back. As of now, it's not happening this year. I'm sorry, I would literally bet um, a very large sum of money since I'm a betting man. It will not happen this year, probably not next year, but you know what, if you guys want to ever see it again, Go try to start making friends with these guys instead of uh, bullying them around. You raised your hand, Reese. Yep. I want to say this as a general, uh, and this is coming from, dude, I got like a C plus average in high school, bro. If that, like, this is, I'm not a smart guy, but 
in life stuff in general, like go into a situation, give people the benefit of the doubt, unless it's a repeated situation. You give people the benefit of the doubt, you treat people with respect, and you listen to what they have to say, you take that into account, and you tell them why you want to accomplish what you want to accomplish. I i.e. getting arena cards back. Mm -hmm. Guys, this helps our sport. We appreciate all the years you guys let us come ride dirt bikes in a place that dirt bikes probably shouldn't be in in the first place. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, absolutely what you said, dude. You, you gotta, don't go into something, oh, you guys are losing so much money because of this or whatever, whatever the paycheck, yeah. You, whatever. I can tell you as a business owner, when people do that to me, you, or you when they immediately, interest, yeah, immediately, you're out, you're already out. Well, I had someone recently, like, they had an issue with their graphics and something, and they immediately tried to strong arm me, and, like, like yeah. I deserve this. I, they actually demanded that, like, hey, I, I didn't like the fitment of this, and rather than, like, try to talk to me over and, like, see if there was an issue, or if, in this scenario, he simply just installed them wrong, instead of going over that, he demanded that I give him something. He even outlined what he wanted, and, hey, send that to me in the next two to three days. You know that's not going to get you far. No. Dude. Like, try to work with someone. Communication. I think a lot of people really struggle with communication. Communicate with them. Work with them. If you need to go strong arm, that's your last resort. Don't go off the bat strong arming. Uh, Justin, I'll be honest with you. I've never... I've taken a few uh, college courses in my day, if you will. They had absolutely nothing to do with business or promoting or how to run an event or how to obtain the common vote from a lot of people, but I have taken multiple interview classes with people that are extremely savvy in that one field, and uh, nothing I've ever been taught in life had to do with people, you go into a situation and you tell somebody why they're wrong and expect to get a good result from it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you gotta be fair, you gotta, you gotta pet people's egos, you gotta kind of play both sides of the fence. If you're going into something where you know... It's not all about you. You have to understand. You're yes. going to it. It's 50-50. It's not all you. It's 50-50. Now, they, if you feel like they're taking too much, you try to push back to get it to 50-50. But it, there's two people talking. Especially, it's 50 /50. especially when it's somebody that holds all the cards. You know what I mean? You have to tread lightly. You definitely have to be careful about what you say. And... Yeah, I don't know. You gotta play. You you gotta you gotta appease people. You have to be realistic with your expectations, and you have to do something for them, or at least make them feel good enough about helping you out that they want to help you out. You know what yeah. I mean? Like realistically speaking, that is, that's life stuff, dude. Not even just dirt bikes. Like, you know what I mean? You can't go up to somebody, hey man, check out my race program. I want your company to sponsor me because I'm this awesome. No, no, no. no. What are you going to do for their company? Are you going to yeah. give them shout outs? Are you going to give hype them up? Are more people going to be interested in what they do because of what you did for them? Then that's worth for them to do. That's worth them helping you out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's, I don't want to say it's simple because it's not, but it's like you got to you gotta work with people, dude. It is what it is. And you know that. You're a business owner for current You have to work with people, which I think we're beating a dead horse so we can move on. But. Yes, you have to work with people. So, can we get... Wait. Douglas wants some free stuff. What do you want? <laughs> I already got you a hat. I don't know what else you want. Um, I'll get you... I'll, can we get him a Moto Monday t-shirt? Yeah, dude. Dude, hit me up. I'll get you a Moto Monday t-shirt. Like, I think you're the most regular guy that watches this. So, he comments more than anybody. Does. Yeah, comments being <laughs> strong. <laughs> Strong comment game. Okay, can we move into the fun part? Oh, I feel like, hold on, before you, Harrison Herman, I miss seeing all you guys too. Miss eating the roost. Oh, I think. Uh, Harrison Drummond, I'm calling you out, dude. You need to ride a dirt bike again. I think it's time. Dude, he's got a child. It, I don't care how many dads you know that race every freaking week. They wait till their kid's like five. I don't care. I want to see Harrison race again. You know, no, come back as an intermediate. Nobody will care. You'll be fine. You're a little bust. Or just a pit bike racer. Oh. Yeah. That's 25, what I'm talking about. 25 plus? Yes. Yeah. On a CRF 150. Yes. Harrison, yes. Please, God, man. Ride dirt bikes again, dude. We miss you, dude. Um, 
Sarah wants a shirt too. Damn it, now everyone wants a shirt. Let's, we'll handle this after the show. So, <laughs> coming up this week, you guys, Doug, we're into the deserve, fun part. Doug deserves a shirt because he comments hands down more than anybody, and uh, that's why. So, if you got a problem with that, I'm sorry. But we can talk after the show. By the way, he actually helps with another podcast too. Doug, you're a man, dude. <laughs> you deserve a shirt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Jimmy says Sarah gives him a run for his money. I think those are two of her top. Jimmy, you drive a hard bargain. That is but fair. The problem is Doug, he he like throws out funny stuff. He throws out awkward stuff. He throws out stuff that makes me just go afterwards go, oh, dude, we had nothing to say. But it's that. always moto related. Yeah, Sarah just wants shirts off. This, Sarah just wants the comments yeah, about shirts off. It's not fair, dude. It's not fair. Um, we'll figure out how to handle that later. So <laughs> let's go to what's coming up next week. Oh, it's a What's baby. coming up this week? Do you know what's coming I, up this I week? I feel like it has something to do with you, Justin. I have a feeling I'm involved with something coming up this week. Woo! <laughs> um, oh yeah. Round one of the Riverdale Winter MX Series. Yes! This <laughs> Sunday, November 19th. Man, do we got some fun stuff planned. Okay, by the way, November 18th, we have a free writing clinic. I have never heard of anyone putting on a free writing clinic. I have actually received two very nasty emails about this. Okay. Of people disagreeing, and you guys honestly can go eat a giant kosher pickle. Because, <laughs> okay, so what it is, November 18th at Riverdale. Actually, okay. let's start from the beginning. Dan Dale, I've been telling him for years, he knows, needs to run a winter series. He then like, well, you know, maybe you could... We went round and round. You guys sidestep each other for like two years, dude. Honestly. Well, you know, just back and forth. I think we need more winter racing options. Um, I can't even keep up. I'm not even going to try to read the comments. I'm not even I'll do my Just next. don't. Just you keep going. You're going to keep going. All right. So, uh, so basically, I think we need more winter racing. I'm a big believer that if there's a lack of winter racing, a lot of people are going to sell their bikes. And we're going to have less people for summer racing. So obviously I've done several years of Mountain View, my favorite track in the Northwest. It's been fun. I always have winners off. Well, now me and Dan Dale are working together and I'm um, the marketing guru now for the uh, Riverdale Winter Series. So we're running a Winter Series out at Riverdale. Uh, they have not had a Winter Series out there since I think like 08, 09 with a lot of milks maybe. I don't quite remember. Someone could maybe correct me on that. But we're going to have a seven round series out there and then... So the race is on Sunday, November 19th. There is going to be a practice and a free riding clinic on the 18th. Now, if we get monsoons, I'm not going to run it. We're going to reschedule. I don't, I mean, it's one thing to go put in a six to 10 minute moto in the rain. And then you go back in your trailer to sit out there for four hours. Mm, nah, I'm not going to ask that of anyone, especially my uh, instructor. So if it, guys, if we get a ton of rain, we're going to reschedule. However, if we get halfway okay weather, we're going to run it, and it's a, all you got to do is just pay your regular $30 practice fee, join the clinic, come ride, come practice with us, and afterwards you can go ride all the tracks just like normal. But uh, I, got, I got a group of about six of us that are all going to work with, it's beginner level only, okay? I thought and, I had to qualify, bro. You're kind of a spode, so. Bad, bro. I need some right. help. I need some help. Maybe, yeah. Um, uh, and so here's my thing. If anyone wants to jump in last minute and help, I think this is a great opportunity for regular moto trainers to potentially find some new clients. I'm not doing this all the time. This is going to be a once in a blue moon thing. And it's a way to help people who are newish to the sport or who are not really advanced to really just hone the basics. And I really want to see a lot of trail riders who have never raced before join this to help get them into riding. You were, you were that guy once. I think when you were back on your 98 Dude, or 250. Please, please bring this. I know where you're going with this. Oh, God. Going back when you were a Jones Creek guy, would you have jumped on this? Oh, if I knew you're about You're going to jump it? on it right now, but like back then, right? I would have been, I would have been scared, but I would have been like, hell yeah, dude. Because, yeah, the, the, the trail. Nick, send me a message when we're done with this podcast. Um, I want this to be a way for people who are not super comfortable, got all their skills honed, 
who are in, all the way down to guys who are straight up on their KDX 220 with their headlights still hooked up, who have never done a starting gate in their life to show up. And they're like, I that, want them that, to... that would be fun. I'd love to try that, but I, I feel like I can't. Exactly. And, and you give them the comments, it's like, no, dude, you're fun, dude. Just show up and race, like have a good time in the dirt bike. Exactly. Um, I want this to be an opportunity for those kind of people to get a chance to learn some solid basics. We're not going to go super advanced, but you know, we're, we're going to have the opportunity. We can throw a lot of knowledge at you. We have some really good instructors. Um, and I want people to feel more comfortable on the track, more comfortable with the gate drops, and more comfortable going out and showing up for a race. I think racing is fun. I think more people need to get up off the couch, stop playing with RC cars, stop gaming. Whoa, bro. Whoa, too soon. Quit too soon. eating the Frito Lays, whatever ninety-two flavors they have. Get off the, hit the gym once a week and ride their dirt bike on the weekends and come out and start doing races. And I think some stuff like this is solid and it's going to be good for those guys to try it out and they realize, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. Oh, this is fun. Maybe I'll show up and do some races. And so we're going to have a free clinic November eighteenth. If we get too much rain, I will make an announcement on all possible social media with, for a rescheduled date just because on a class, there's a lot of just standing out there and talking, and I don't want riders to sit out in the 50-degree, 45-degree well, weather in the rain for four rain. hours in the pouring people, rain. People aren't going to have fun. It's yes. not going to be fun. And the whole principle of that is to have fun. Uh, Justin, just to brush over some stuff here really quick, buddy. Uh, Matt says, give Doug... A dick shirt. Classic. Harrison Drummond. I'm not coming back to an immediate. Oh, I still have been riding pro only. I feel like Harrison's been maybe been thinking about this. Harrison Drummond, we're calling you out, dude. We want to see you make some local races. I don't even care about dude practice days. Just ride a dirt bike. Come out where everybody can see yeah. you, dude. Jeez. Just come out. Um, uh, so we have our clinic on the 18th. And then the first round of the Riverdale series will be on the 19th. We haven't picked a track yet. I will make the announcement late Wednesday night um, on which track we're going to run. Just know if you're racing this series, there are four tracks at Riverdale. It could be any one of those tracks. And I don't want to hear a single complaint if we run a rubber band start, if we run a light start, if we have gates. Hey, it's Because it could be any of them. We're racing in the winter, dude. Kristoff, uh, uh, can I get a quick shout for photos? $50 for... Uh, 50 bucks covers practice and race day only. So there you go, Christoph. Shout out to Gate Drop Productions. If you guys want coverage for the first round, it will be $50 for the day. For full coverage, he sends you a bunch of pictures. Contact him for more details on all that. But it's a pretty good deal. You get like, it's not just like a picture. You get like a no, bunch. No, they snap. You get like multiple from each corner. Everyone reads that, you get multiple of yourself. You get to pick whatever you like. You know? Pretty rad. Yeah, I, I did it at one of the Mountain View rounds. And although, all the jumps he got a picture of me on, I had him like straight up and down and lame. Like the jumps I was throwing whips off of, he never got a picture. So maybe you should just learn how to whip better, dude. I, I'm. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Very uh, fair. Because most of the jumps <laughs> there, I was keeping a straight on. I, I think. Kinda, uh, this, this. Although there was one like little like it was one of those jumps that was like a thirty degree angle to the right off of it. And I actually had a bit of steez on there. Like, hey, look, I'm actually throwing my leg out. Okay. Dude, I, the thing is, bro, nowadays, man, like, people like... I'm a vet rider. Go eat the onion. Right. It, well, people like Austin Johnson, dude, they're killing it, bro. Like, when you can do, like, a, a quote, C rider and throw your rear fender above your head like Brett Q, it just ruins it for the rest of us. True. He, that, dude. So, yeah. God. I'm not. I'm not actually dissing on him. Because uh, I have a pretty boring style unless I literally try. I have the old school 1993 whip. scrub. Right, right. Which like is my scrub. Like a, it's like a whip in the air though. Watch <laughs> Ted Holt ride. And that's literally, and he's like 50. That's my riding style. When I scrub, I'm laying on the rear fender. It's the weirdest looking thing. I know I have a weird riding style. Sometimes all it takes is like having a photographer take a bunch of photos of you. You realize, God, I look lame. <laughs> Man, I look lame. And then, although there was one photo in my collection where I remember seeing him the lap before, and the next time around I threw it out, I'm like, oh, hey, there's a whip. Okay, I got one whip, but I have to remember. Out of, out of like, yeah, yeah, right, no. So I did like a half whip, half scrub thing over this thing, and then I looked so nice and steezy. My normal riding style was, I'll admit, pretty boring. Um, Until I, I can heel clicker. I got him back. 
Yes. I have proof. I have pictures. I have not done a heel clicker all year. I officially have them back. Well, it's more of a toe clicker. I can't, don't have, quite have a lot of flexibility, bro. I'm old. I'm a vet rider. It's a lot of Scott, flexibility. Scott wants to know if you still got a pit bike for him to race at the opener. Scott, uh, I need to make sure they run. Maybe talk to this guy over here to see if he'll help me get them all running. But Maybe. I have multiple pit bikes, multiple extra engines. I just need to make sure they all run right. So probably yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Mancuso already told you I'd come. Yeah, I already, talked, I already talked to him. Yeah, I think. Oh, I think yeah. caught up to most of those. JR. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, this, there's a lot of people watching, dude. Like, Thank you guys for like giving an interest in me and Justin sitting here talking crap about dirt bikes and stuff. You know, I agree. I appreciate you guys. Every single person who watches this on Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, or anywhere, Instagram, everywhere we're going to throw this, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you guys supporting and thinking we're entertaining enough to actually tune in for more than 60 seconds. Dude, and all the people that like comment and like interact with it, it's rad. Dude, because like you guys don't understand this, despite the couch courtesy of UMX and everything, this literally started out as a joke between me and Justin. We were like, oh, oh. That, that would be funny to do. Like nobody would watch. Like it's it's rad. It's it's it doesn't it's been fun. It's been rad. It's been growing. I appreciate everyone who supports the Moto Monday. It literally started off as us on two mushroom stools. Yep. In front of the phone. Perched next to the computer screen, that has now grown to. Um, dude, we, we actually have a full mic set up, a soundboard. Dude, we're going um, YouTube. We have a logo. Logo, YouTube. We've got legit guests coming. We have in. a logo. We. So who's going to be our next guest? I don't know, dude. Okay, before we gotta go soon, guys. Before we go, who should we bring on for the next Moto Monday guest? It'll be Moto Monday twenty eight. Who in the industry, who around the Northwest motocross scene do you think would be entertaining to bring on? I know we still need to talk to Barnes. He said he'd be down. But outside of Brian, we need to coordinate that with him. Who do you guys think would be fun? Oh, I'm getting some, uh, Mike Smith would be a cool guest. Jason. It's like Wayne's World Classic. I think Jason just said, I think he just agreed to come back on pretty much is what he said. Scott Russell, Huffman. You guys, as far as the big names, Huffman, some of the ones you've thrown out, it's in the works. We're going to try. Rick Wilder. Oh, that'd be I good. just talked to him uh, yesterday. I Oh, Harrison Drummond. Yes, Harrison. Um, dude, you need to come on. Joel R., Gary Byer. Gary has a bit of a drive. I'll, I'll hit him up. Joel's not too far. Um... Uh, Joey Lang. Matt Frank said he stopped listening to Pulp MX to watch this. Yes! Maddie, thank you, brother. It's mucho appreciated. Support. Um, I think Joey... Uh, Fort. Wait, Fort who? I think... Dude, Lancaster, bro. We need to get Joey on here. Joey Lan Joey would be fun. Joey, we saw you commenting earlier, dude. You gotta get on here. Harrison did kind of nominate himself. He did. Harrison Drummond would be Harrison, a if you're down to do next week, dude, okay. let us know, buddy. Okay, guys, so Jim Anderson. I talked to Jim Anderson just a couple days ago. He was in my shop. I tried to get him on Moto Monday, and he's like, no. Not feeling it too old school. No. He yeah. was like, I don't think so. I will keep <laughs> working on him. One day I will get Jim Anderson on here, but it's going to take a lot of talking into. <laughs> Force Transu. That would be a good one. Um... Joey and Rory together would be fun. Um, yeah, Joey would be a lot of fun. Lance Mail. Yeah, we've talked about that. Lance, if you're watching right now, I think I saw he was watching earlier. Um, Lance would be a fun one. Lance, we know it's a bit of a drive. Dude, that's but... two for Lance, three for Lance. Mike Storm, how is Mike doing, I wonder? Lance Mail would be rad, dude. Hennessy on tap racing. I'm pretty sure Andy already told me he, he didn't want to do this. Dude, let's go full old school. Let's bring on Ron's son. Oh, that'd be rad. We, I wonder if I still have his number. I don't think I do. We should hit up Ron's son. Dan, I can't, Mike made a full Mike Quarter. Quarter would be a fun one. 
We, we're getting a lot of votes for Joey right now. Joey, People think Joey is funny. Joey, I think you might need to come on the Moto Monday, dude. I don't know if Chuck's son still lives around here. Do you, does anyone know if Chuck still lives around I know Ron does. I don't know if Chuck does, though. Um, Darren Rogers. Ooh. Steve Corey. Mm. I think we could get Steve on here. I think we could. A little could, bit of coaxing, maybe a couple of it, it would take some convincing. I think we could get him on. I think we could get him on and be rad. Um... Steve, Andy. Steve, we're calling you out, dude. Uh, sure Steve. Steve. Future motor, and he doesn't live that far away. If we bring on Steve, he needs to bring a turtle. Or yes, with him. he does. He does. Um, man, we're getting a lot of good suggestions, dude. Look, we need to write all these down, and. Patrick's. We should get Patrick's on one of these days. Oh, another Lance Smell. Dude, we gotta get Lance on here, bro. Lance, Lance Evans, Ryan Leach. Dude, it's blowing up, dude. All the big names. A lot of good ideas. We're gonna write all these down and we're gonna start hitting them all up so we can start scheduling because I try to schedule way ahead. So. Well, unfortunately, like Lance, some of these guys, like, they're, they're, it takes a couple hours to get here. You know, that's a, we're asking a lot. We do people. need to bring on Ryan. If you're down to do this again, Ryan Abrigo. Yes. We should do another one with you. Um. Now that we have some new updated equipment, we had a lot of tech. Oh, I'm sorry, you weren't here. Me and my had a lot of though. technical difficulties. Yes. But it was a good one. It was one of the highest watched Moto Mondays ever. We well, guys had two legit promoters. You guys have been the industry here. It makes sense. It was rad. I listened to the whole thing um, the well, next day. And that's why I kind of enjoyed it just being me and him. We kind of were able to go deep. Well, you and me talked about this. I told you, dude. Like, it was... I was glad, honestly glad that I didn't show up because you guys got to go kind of tit for tat. Like, I was, glad, I was glad I wasn't here because it allowed the sh it allowed it to go that direction. It was rad. Um, I enjoyed listening to it, and I did the whole thing. Well, yeah, and he, had, he had some ideas and some other people to bring on, and like I liked all the people, but I was like, dude, if we want to go deep, it needs to just kind of be you and me because there's too many, when there gets to be a bunch of people on, we can't really go as deep. We, we don't, try to we, we include everybody... It's, yeah. a, it's a lot to do, dude, in like an hour or an hour and a half. You know what I mean? It's a lot. Especially when somebody like Abrigo and yourself can go, you guys can go around the sort of stories in Moto. Yes. Locally. I mean, yes. for, for way more time than we have. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. Well, we got a lot of good suggestions. We're going to have to cut this off here soon. Call it a day. Um... Roy and Joey. Dax. Yes, I'm going to try to get Dax on soon, too. So, oh, uh, get him to just pump up the golden tire, dude. You just get golden, golden tire, tire plugs for days. For days. <laughs> Dax, if you're watching, I want you to be a future Moto Monday guest. I've only told you like a half dozen times. Um, Jason uh, Matheny from Met Litter. Uh, he's already said he's too busy. Watch out for the USB, by the way. <laughs> um, no, Jason's like, I'll let Dax do it. All right, Dax, you're getting so called Dax, out. So, Dax, you're getting called out by all of us. Uh, what's up, Corbin? Um, sheesh, okay, we got a ton of suggestions. We can read through these later. Oh, We're going to have to get out of here. I want to sh just throw out one more thing. Oh, by the way, guys, I'm totally sorry. I got so excited about my own event. There is another race going on Sunday as well. Eugene MX is running a race. For the Oregon Series? You know what? I actually don't remember if it's part of the Oregon. I want to say it is. I'd have to double check. Um, but yeah, Eugene MX is running a race on Sunday as well. If you guys want to find out more info about that, uh, go look up on social media like Facebook, Territorial MX Park. Uh, I got so excited about my own event. I forgot there's one other race running on the same day. So uh, I know this seems selfish. I literally we talked for like 5-10 minutes of my race without talking about Eugene. But obviously, I won't be at Eugene, but there is that going on as well. Um, so go check them out, Territorial Motocross Park. My microphone is falling. It's just technical <laughs> difficulties over here. It made it the whole show. Oh, it's okay, good. we're good. Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're logging out anyways. Um, Mikey Horgan, he'd be another fun one. So we're going to get out of here. I just want to throw in one more thing, though, for the race at Riverdale. If you guys have pit bikes... Show up, bring the pit bikes. There's going to be a free pit bike halftime show. 
If anyone thinks they can beat me, show up with an air-cooled four-stroke mini bike. Come race at Riverdale, November nineteenth. I feel like Joey Lancaster might give you a run for your money, dude. I watch him do it. We all know day. Joey can give me a run for his money. He can run for my money. So Joey, if you want to show up, great, right, bro. So let's do this. We gotta get out of here. Yes, it is a droopy rod. I know, my bad microphone. Reese, this has been fun. This was Moto Monday number twenty-seven. Any final words before uh, we get out of here? God, I don't know, dude. Uh, like, there's so many comments rolling. Um, Daniel, get Tommy Week on. I want to hear his facts for you. We've talked about it. It still may happen. We kind of want to do just maybe drop a little bit of the ball here on on Moto Monday. You don't care, do you? How we? How have we dropped any balls? I I saw what you did there and I respect it. Uh, at some point, we want to get all the Washugo boys on here. Ryan Huffman, I'm calling you out. If you want to get on, contact me via Facebook, via text, which I will give you my number, via Instagram, email. What other ways can you contact me? Email, text, uh, uh, voice messaging on Pigeon. IPhone. Send a pigeon or a dove. <laughs> I don't care. Get um, a hold of me. Anyways, you guys, at some, at some point, we will get the Washuga boys on here. It just, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of scheduling. We're going to do our best. Um, Doug, no, Reese does not. Just to answer that question. Close this up. Reese, how do we find you? Do we find you on Facebook? Just Reese Bonifant? Just Reese Bonifant on Facebook, dude. That's it. Nothing crazy. Any final words of wisdom before we get out of here? Uh, words of wisdom? Or words of whatever bullshit I will say this. I will say this. Um, I raced my dirt bike on Sunday. I was running on no sleep. Worked a 24-hour shift. I had a blast, dude. I was running on the pits, high-fiving people. I had a good boat and a bad moto. It was fun. I had fun on my dirt bike on a race weekend. It's been a while since that's happened. And uh, it's all worth it, dude. All of it. It's rad. Dirt bikes are sick. You guys, race your dirt bikes. Uh, quick shout-out. Jason at JMR, Jeremiah, Gershon Power Sports, uh, Mike Metals, dude, everybody that helps me out. Bent Lever Motorsports, dude, all the local boys, thank you guys for doing what you're doing. It doesn't go unnoticed. We appreciate it. Appreciate the discounts, everything. All right. So if you guys have any interest in following me, you can, of course, uh, find me on Snapchat, Justin.Wharton. You can find me on Instagram, Justin.Wharton. Twitter? And no. I am protesting Twitter. I've been on two years. Don't lie, bro. Twitter. You still tweet. I, I do not tweet. tweet. <laughs> I swear in my mother's future grave, I do not tweet. Um, I, you can find me, I think that's about all the social media I have. Instagram, Facebook, of course, Facebook, Justin Wharton. Um, YouTube. Be sure Check out the YouTube channel, guys, for Moto Well, Mondays. this will also be on YouTube. If you guys want to follow 110 Clothing, we now have a SoundCloud account. Go look up 110 Clothing also on YouTube, 110 Clothing, Facebook, Instagram. All you guys got to do is type in O-N-E-1-0 Clothing, and you will find it. Remember, always give 110%. And for anyone who wants to debate me about not, there's no such thing as 110%. Oh, don't, you guys don't get them started. Don't we, get them started on this one. Plus, we can not definitely it. debate about it because <laughs> anyone who thinks they can give a hundred, they can only give a hundred percent, and I believe I can give one hundred and ten percent. I will guarantee you, I will always beat you because ninety percent of life is all mental. One hundred ten percent is about pushing your mental boundaries to be unless, better than you, the person you were yesterday. Unless you're AMA pro and qualify for a form for the other national. That guy might give you a run for his money. Just saying. Just throw it out. Let's go lap for lap. Let's just go laps until Dude, we run out of you gas. Are, oh, good. You're caught up. I feel like you're, there's no Any way. <laughs> super cross rider who wants to race me, oh, who only God. believes you can give 100% and you cannot push past that, hit me up. I guarantee I'll beat you because you I, can always be better than you think you can be. And that's what I, even 110% God, I, is. I really want to see a Brigo just Wax you in the 30 plus. Class. I think I agree, would agree that me, much of racing is mental. Yeah, I think you would agree, but I feel like you could still smoke you, dude. I'm just saying. And I think that is uh, Doug, JJW at myspace.com. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, we are going to end on that. Thank you guys. That was Motor Monday number 27. We will be back next Monday, yep. 7 p.m., for Motor Monday number 28. We're getting close to 30. Hell yeah. Uh, 
Final words, Justin? Final words, um, ride your dirt bike, have fun. Yes. And um, give 110%. Get better. Get better for yourself. Yeah. Do the best you can, hell yeah. Do the best you can, try to be, as long as you try to be better than the guy you were yesterday, rad. And as long as you're having fun on your dirt bike, I don't care if you have a 1982 XR500, <laughs> just go ride your dirt bike and have fun on it, man. Dude, I don't, yeah, race PIR on a 96 KX125, dude. Just show up, man. We just need, show up. We need more people to want to Show up on the starting line, have fun, show up for the races. Don't be intimidated. It's all good. Everybody's here to have fun, be competitive. And that's all that matters. And, and get better, dude. That's what we're all striving for, just to get better for ourselves. A lot of us know, Justin, you and me are never going to qualify for AMA Outdoor National. We don't have the time, the money. I'm going to do a Canadian National, though. Right, but do you know time, money? All you Canadians, and I will see you in Kamloops. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. 2018, 19, somewhere in there, I'll let you know. But I will be in Kamloops. 250 class? 450. 450 is going to be cheaper to maintain as far as a bike for you to practice on. And if you're going to go big once, you might as well I go I lost some weight. I can almost ride a 250F now. Just send it to the big boy class, dude. That's uh, You might as well. You're going to do it once. Send it. I do like a 450. I can totally screw up a corner and just twist and shout. Bro. 450 class cam loops. I will <laughs> report back in what exact one I'm doing. I don't know if I'm making it this year. Maybe 19. We'll see. We gotta get out of here, bro. Thank yeah. you guys for watching. Uh, We're out of here. Um, quick plug. Uh, uh, more plugs. God, Hurry up, Reese. I don't even know, dude. Who didn't any shout out yet? Yeah. You yeah. shout out everyone. We got JMR, Mike Metals. We got On Tap Racing, Will and Mafia. All the boys, dude. Gresham Park Sports. Everybody. Thank you guys. Bent Lever. All, all the local boys. Everybody. Ken Bates at KBR. Everybody that's doing stuff locally for motocross. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep staying rad. Uh, future Moto Monday. Take your shirt off t-shirts. We'll be dropping before Christmas. Stay tuned. Harrison Drummond, you're on the show. Don't even pretend like you're not. <laughs>